Hey, from Fairfield Lanes, welcome once again to the Huda Pole King of TV Bowling. I'd like to wish you and your families a happy Valentine's Day. I'm Tom Brenneman along with Jennifer Klee Camp and David Newrath. And Jennifer, uh, Fairfield Lanes got a lot of things going out here these days. Absolutely. They're presently holding the city tournament. Uh, last weekend, it, we qualified here. We had two 300 games from Terry Rose in two consecutive days. Outstanding scores. We also had Scott Rasp, who had an 833, including two 300 games. Yeah. Gee, big numbers. And speaking of Terry Rose, he's going to be in our first match, David. And wait a minute. What is that? Uh, well, it's Valentine's Day, so I thought I'd dress for the occasion, Tommy. But uh, a <laughs> box of candy presented to us by uh, the management here. Bud, thank you very much. We like it. But in the first match, we're going to see some great bowling. And I'll tell you what. Uh, we're going to see a person that has not been on the show in quite a few years, Billy Butcher. A uh, little unorthodox, tall, lanky kid, but he straps it and he hits his mark uh, nine times out of ten. Great bowler. Second contestant is going to be Terry Rose. He was the story here last week. Won 300 on Saturday, won 300 on Sunday. 770-something series. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, we've got that and much, much more. Looking for the big numbers these guys have put them up in the past. Coming up on the Utapol King of TV Bowling from Fairfield Lanes in Fairfield, Ohio. Cincinnati BPA's Cutipole King of Bowling. Brought to you by Hewdy Delight, Cincinnati's own light beer and an official beer sponsor of the Greater Cincinnati Bicentennial. TV Bowling, week number four. I'd like to pass along a happy Valentine's Day to my working cohorts here, Jennifer Kleekamp and David Newrath. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Sure. That's a special thing from you. <laughs> <laughs> and here's our first roll of the day. This guy chalked up an impressive roll-off score, did he not, David? Yeah. Two. Two what, Jim? 279. Oh. Wow. To 164, no contest there. No. Fabulous game. No, we've, uh, we haven't seen Billy in a while, and like I said in the opening, he has an unorthodox style. Of course, he's that tall, and he's lanky, and uh, doesn't really do things by the book, but he does, he does execute on demand and bring him back his spare in his first frame. Like you said, he executes, meaning in other words, that more times than not, 10 in the pit is standard. He does it with some regularity. And if we're talking about a man who strikes with regularity, Terry Rose's weekend last weekend was nothing short of great. And he starts out with the same way that he chalked up two 300s last weekend with a perfect strike. We've got a fabulous crowd on hand. Absolutely packed here. This is great. It's been our biggest crowd of the year, I believe. I would say so by far. And speaking of... Uh, a big crowd. Terry has got a lot of his family I know here today rooting him on. So if you hear a lot of hooting and hollering every time Terry drains ten of them, that is the reason why. And it's all headed by probably his two sons, Brad and Craig. Come on, Dad. There he goes, looking for number two. And they all go in the pit. Got a little help there at the end. To set up the match, Tommy, I will tell you that the uh, two bowlers are going to be playing the lanes. Uh, in the same basic area, about the seventh, somewhere between the seventh and eighth board, maybe the sixth board if they swing it a little wide, but Terry's going to be going much more direct than Billy. He's looping the ball a little bit more. Now he's lined up. First ball he looped, that he went a little more directly on, and uh, he gets the bone. I'll tell you, 10 in the pit again. I, I predict, I don't do this too often, but I'll tell you what, I predict mm -hmm. our, our average today mm -hmm. on the show is going to be about 240. Mm -hmm. 
Going into this week, incidentally, we do have a 231 average on the show. That's through 18 games. We've had some outstanding competition so far. And as David mentioned, he's expecting it to heat up even more today. Bill at it again, and again, 10 go down. You said he found his line. Well, the first frame, he got the ball a little wide, and on the replay, we'll be able to see that the, the ball is a little straighter through the heads and going down the lane into uh, a little better roll. We'll pick that replay up a little later on, but uh, he did line up. He's uh, adjusted his mark and his arm swing, and he's in great shape. And Terry Rose is familiar with Fairfield. And he showed you right there, this is his home base. Bowls out here twice a week. Terry Rose strikes with regularity, and he is executing to perfection. Tom Schiller today from West Hills Ford has brought us a Thunderbird. Terry Rose is three frames, three strikes on his way there. It's sitting out in the parking lot right at this moment, ready to be taken home. Going to take a look at the score, Dave, and we're moving right along. Take a look at that momentarily as Mr. Rose goes for number four in a row. Mm. He lightened up on that shot. He got slow, and the ball did run high, leaving a uh, very, very lucky break on the 10-pin, quite frankly. He's going to try to pick up that spare. We are qualifying today out at Super Bowl. We had a good turnout yesterday. Um, come on out and give it a shot. And we talked about the spare. No problems whatsoever. And we've already got ourselves a match through four frames. Well, the scoreboard would show us that uh, Terry Rose is about nine pins in the lead at this point, but Bill Butcher has an opportunity to uh, actually take the lead by one pin if he strikes here. He's looking for it, and he's on the money. Bill, uh, one of the more emotional players we've seen this year. Oh, yeah. He covers some boards with the bowling ball and with his twinkly toes. <laughs> <laughs> twinkly toes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on the dance floor, you'd understand. Billy also, he has two children, a little boy and a little girl. Wife Patty is here this morning cheering him on. He started bowling at the age of four at Western Bowl. Um, he started bowling with when I was way back when, just about then. Way back when. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 22 yeah. for a week now. Eons and eons ago. Miss that one. I tell you what, this is a, a crucial shot in a bad place to put it. Leaving the three, five, six, nine, the right-hander's bucket. You're going to see the replay here. Now the ball that he's been striking on right there is holding out. He's trying to give it some body help, but now he knows he's got a problem. Deflection. You betcha. Tough spare and a bad count on a triple. This could hurt him. But he picks it up. Very good coverage on that spare. Talk about that kind of game he rolled uh, in the roll-off, that 279 score. The only frame which he did not roll a strike was the fourth. He came back and knocked down eight consecutive strikes. Yeah, just drilled it right to Don Hughes, incidentally, who is here marking score for us today, uh, who Bill beat in the roll-off. I believe Don's qualified for every show so far. He has. Now, there you go. Now, uh, Terry Rose smells blood. Now, I'll tell you what, he throws this shot with all the trust that you can ever hope to see on a ball. He just strokes it out to about the fifth board and then uh, leisurely lets the ball roll back to the pocket. Got a swishing strike. He has a three-pin advantage actual on the board. A strike working, make it 13. Could increase his lead even more with another strike here. Looks like he's... Found the groove again. And that tells the tale. Terry has really got it going right now. Well, I was talking to him before we uh, started the match, and he said he drilled up this new ball a couple of weeks ago, and he's having a lot of uh, success with it. He's maxed out on the, uh, on the weight block. There you see it, three-pin advantage, actual fourth frame, 99 to 96, with a double working. Big, big double right here, but Billy does not give up. Dave, you talked about uh, Terry getting a new ball. Uh, for most people who, bowling le who bowl in leagues or whether it's just recreational bowling, is there ever a time when you know it's time to get a new ball? Well, believe it or not, Tommy, they actually wear out. 
I mean, they, they do. And uh, it's, it's made of a substance now, it's a, normally polyurethane or the plastic ones, doesn't make any difference. They lose their resilience. In other words, they get, they get dead, mm -hmm. like a tennis ball. Uh, or a golf ball after guys like you and me tear the cover off of yeah. it, you know, with our powerful drives. <coughs> uh, no, you actually need a new ball uh, about every five, oh, I'd say about every three to four hundred games would, would be a good milestone. And some of these guys, they bowl uh, roughly how many a week? Well, I was just looking here. Terry Rose, he bowls twice a week in league, but he uh, practices 10 to 20 games a week. That that makes for a sharp game, no question about it. You bet it does. Uh, bringing back the spare, the seven pin, gives him 136 in the sixth, but Terry Rose is the story right now. Three strikes to open the match, a spare in the fourth, two more, and he looks so, so comfortable out there. Bill Butch, uh, he bowls five times a week and practices ten games. That's a lot of games for these guys. So that ball can roll out, can wear out pretty quickly. <laughs> you bowl at that kind of pace. It didn't look like he had he, but, uh, found the line that he'd had the last couple of frames there. Tommy, you could see motion there with his arm. He came over the top of the ball, pointed it up, and the elbow flared out to the left. You do all those things wrong. You're very happy to, go, to get eight. Are you saying I do? Oh, you win anybody. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Picking up the 4-7. And that lets Billy Butcher have an opportunity to throw some X's on the board and get back into the match. But he's got to get going, and it's got to start now. Now, what's the scoreboard going to tell us here, David? Well, you, you can see it there. It's uh, 147. Uh, to 136. That's an 11 pin deficit that uh, Billy has to make up. Terry going to try to increase. Ring 7 pin. Great shot. Well, he uh, started off with a spare in the first. Or rather, yeah, spare in the. No, strike three, in the yeah, first three, three. strikes and then a spare. Uh, he's lined up with the exception of that one bad pitch, and that unfortunately just shows he's human. And he picks up the spare. Terry has a tremendous amount of, of rewards and merits behind him, uh, particularly in the greater Hamilton area where he bowls. Uh, he was their bowling association doubles champion, also the all events scratch champion. And for the people who don't know, that is a composite of your singles, doubles, and team score, uh, which is, a, a, once again, a very prestigious uh, title to maintain. And he's also captain the first ever GHBA, Greater Hamilton Bowling Association All-Star team, who bowls the Cincinnati All-Stars every year. Oddly enough, right there, Bill realized he had made a mistake, and then he kind of stepped away from the pins and said, but hey, I'll take it, I'll take it. It could have been worse. You betcha. And, and it's 11 pins. He's only down 11 pins with two frames to go. He brings his spare back. He can really have an opportunity to put, you, put the uh, pressure on uh, Terry Rose here in the ninth and 10th frame. Mm. <laughs> wow. Look at him. Taking a little sigh of relief there. Hang on, Sloopy. Wipe that brow. <laughs> Let's hear He's another chorus of that. Oh, day. okay. Now, one, one song more. a week. That's it. One I'm more. Sloopy lives in the grave. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. In the truck. <laughs> <laughs> of course, back in the truck, as always, our fine technical crew out here at Fairfield Lanes and director Roy Alfers and his top assistant, Rufus Rathbone, Jesse Jackson. And we hold them in high esteem since they control all the buttons. Yes, right? sir. <laughs> Billy went high, leaving the uh, 6, uh, 10, and he's not doing what we saw him do in the roll-off, and that... Uh, that is, stroke the ball. He's trying to fit the ball into the pocket right now, and uh, that just doesn't work. Trying to force things? He's trying to force the ball into the hole and force the strikes down rather than get that fluid, free arm swing that, uh, that he needs to carry. Our Jim? gracious host this morning is Bud and Norm Boskin. Uh, this is a fabulous place here. I'm very impressed with this Fairfield Lanes. It's very nice. There you see the score, 173 for Billy in the eighth, 66 in the seventh, with a spare working for Terry. Yeah. Yeah. Making a strike in the ninth frame, 
Big frame to build on. That's the one you want to do it. Carries a 13-pin advantage into the 10th frame. And on the replay, we can see that this ball is going to run high on him, but he's got a lot on it. There you see, bottom of the swing, going over the sixth board. Now he's going to fill up the, the pocket. That middle head pin there goes straight back. The three pin goes to the wall, wedges itself in between the six and the ten for a big, big strike in the ninth frame. The only way he could lose this match at this point is to open up in the tenth frame. David, you made your prediction about the high scores today. What did we just say? Wow. Don't mm. go away, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, story on this is that if, uh, if, assuming he picks up one of these, that will give him 214. Billy needs two strikes in the 10th frame, but he would win the game. Oh, well, you said he got one. And that's exactly what he did. And now Billy, the pressure's on Bill. Exactly right. And the situation is this, Tommy. If Billy strikes on the first ball, gives him 193 in the ninth frame, he would, if with a spare, would give him 213, losing by a pin. He's got to have two strikes. And this is what it's all about. We've said many times before, match play brings out the best. And there's one of them. Well, that's, that's the big one. Obviously, you can't do anything unless you get that one. But the next shot. The next one is the one that we'll see if Bill Butcher can respond to the pressure. He's talking to himself. He's, he's, he's really pumped. I can see it on his face. I've seen him bowl under pressure in the past, too. Bill is very good under pressure. He has been on our show, or never been on our show, as a matter of fact. Neither one of these players have, and it's surprising with all their accomplishments. Here he goes for number two. The bearded marble! That's <laughs> the bearded marvel. <laughs> I guess I guess that's one of Terry's friends. <laughs> Bill uh, a little disappointed in himself and, and uh, to to have an opportunity to win and then not perform. Well, that's that's what it's all about. But it is frustrating. Makes He'll toughing a little loser. It uh, <laughs> makes losing a little tougher. We'll try that again. Yeah, yeah that too. But uh, still a commendable game. Two thirteen. So Terry Rose, the hometown favorite, will move on to our next round. He wins at 214 to 213. Up next, our 14K Golden Ball Contest.